All right, thank you very much. My name is Brian Anderson. My company is called Notionovas.com, or Notionovas. Uh, website is at Notionovas.com, and I also have these uh, uh, social media sites. I don't have an Instagram, so don't look. It's, it's said on, power on. Oh, okay, I'm good. Um, so, uh, notionovus is built out of the two Latin words, uh, notio, which is the Latin word for thought, and uh, novus is the Latin word for new. So, we're going to see if we can drop some new thoughts on you here today. Uh, and this is specifically a story about my life behind barcodes. Um, let's start out with some frequently asked questions. Is the topic of barcodes really as dry as it sounds? And the answer is, oh well, think of it like day old white toast in the middle of the Mojave. So yeah, affirmative. Um, will, there, will this presentation involve maths? Um, yes, yes it will. What does barcodes have to do with WordPress? Well, if you think about it, barcodes is about using computer technology to communicate information. So you might very well think about barcodes as the 70 year old predecessor to WordPress. And finally, can I just slip out the back when no one is looking? And I'm afraid, sadly, no, there's going to be a quiz and there will be, there will be consequences. I mean, prizes. There, w there will be prizes. So, there we go. All right, so I want to introduce a couple blokes to you. One of, them by, one of them goes by the name of Bernard Silver. The other one goes by the name of Norman Joseph Woodland. And they had a conversation I'm making up. Uh, it went something like this. Hey, NJ. Yes, Bernard. Why are we at the beach? I wanted to tell you something in Morse code. Well, just draw it in the sand. I haven't got all day. Very well, here it is. It spells groceries. But you've made it too tall. Your dots are lines and your dashes are bar bars. Well, I totally meant to do that. By Jove, you've just invented the barcode. <laughs> and I know, right? Now let's slip back to Drexel Institute of Technology where we are graduate students and put a vinyl of 12th Street rag on the phonograph in the electrical engineering lab because that song is popular now that it's 1948. So you may have noticed a little bit of uh, uh, backloading of trivial information you may find useful later. Um, uh, Mr. Woodland and Silver did, in fact, invent the barcode. Um, their patent was granted on October 7th, 1952. Shortly thereafter, it was purchased by Philco. And then shortly after that, uh, RCA picked up the patent. It expired back in 1969. You're going to want to find 1969 as, a, as a, um, an interesting date. And I'll cover it again later on. But this is what the original barcode looked like actually. It wasn't a rectangle, though the type that you see today. When it was first invented, it was invented as a circle because uh, Mr. Woodland didn't really, wasn't really confident that he could get scanners to position the rectangle correctly. And so he made it into a circle so it didn't matter what your orientation was. Also, they had this big contraption that they also invented along with the barcode and it would take these barcodes and take pictures of them, convert them into uh, almost audio signals and put them on film. And that was how the barcode reader was supposed to work. Um, not really well suited for grocery or supermarkets. One thing about their invention that is true to this day is this part right here. Uh, these vertical uh, spikes are actually voltage signals. And if you think of a barcode as these black and white, uh, black bars and white spaces, every time the infrared diode 
hits a black bar, it kind of vanishes into that bar and doesn't reflect back into the barcode scanner. And every time it hits a white space, it actually reflects back and, and provides a high voltage signal. So this is how the, the computer reads a barcode is by going back and forth through these um, bars and spaces and noting those high voltage signals. All right, so now we get a, we get a little dry. This, this is gonna start to be a little dry. Uh, we're gonna talk about symbologies and really symbology, you might not have heard that word before, but symbology is what we in the barcode industry refer to as uh, the type of barcode. So you'll hear this word again and again as I discuss barcodes, and it really just means barcodes of different types. So the first uh, symbology that I want to talk to you about is code 39. This is, a, this is kind of an ancient uh, barcode, but it's still in use today. Code 39 uh, was actually used by the Automotive Industry Action Group uh, for their manufacturing logistics, and it was invented back in 1974. Now, these first three barcodes I'm going to show you are linear or one-dimensional barcodes, 1D barcodes, and the uh, second three I'm going to show you are 2D or matrix barcodes. So this is another 1D barcode. This is the UPC barcode. And you're going to want to know that because that's what you see on everything that has a symbol on it like this. This is a UPC barcode. And uh, the first scan of a UPC barcode was actually on a package of Wrigley's Juicy Fruit Gum in uh, Troy, Ohio, and it was scanned by a woman named Sharon of Troy. And uh, not Helen of Troy, but Sharon of Troy, Ohio. And uh, she scanned that in, on the 26th of June in 1974. And if you think back on when the barcode patent expired, it was back in 1969. So all those years without an actual application that was significant enough to uh, pay off the people who invested in that patent kind of makes you wonder if uh, patents are really all that useful. Um, and then finally, this is code 128. Now this is the barcode that uh, is more modern than the code 39. It replaces the code 39 in many cases. Um, it supports all ASCII characters. So you can, you can put anything, upper case, lower case, numbers, symbols, uh, anything that's, low, that's in the low ASCII range from zero to 127. And that makes it one of the most popular 1D barcode symbologies. Now we're gonna get into 2D barcode symbologies. There's data matrix. And data matrix is popular because it's really good if you want to emboss a barcode on something or you want to drill a barcode into metal. Um, it's, it's used quite a bit in very small, tiny applications. If you find like a computer chip that has a barcode on it, it's probably got one of these. Um, they're stackable. You can put multiple barcodes together and it all scan as one barcode. And um, they, it was invented back in 1990. The next one is PDF-417. Now you've seen these on boarding passes and you'll see one on the back of your driver's license. It's got two big bars on the sides and then it's got a bunch of little dots in between. That's the PDF-417. It's super dense. It was invented back in 1991 and it's very popular today in, in all kinds of applications. And then finally we have the QR code. Now the QR code was invented by Denso Wave for the Japanese autom automotive manufacturers. It was invented back in 1994 and it's very popular primarily because it's royalty free and um, the web and um, social media and uh, smartphones have really picked up on this. And so generally speaking, if you look at a poster and it's got a barcode on it, it'll have one of these QR codes right here. Okay, the dreaded quiz, <laughs> part one. At what university did Silver and Woodland work as graduate students in 1948? Yes. Drexel. Drexel. Very good. All right, the original concept of a working barcode was not rectangular, but very good, circular. What's that? Sure. 
her. All right. What is the word commonly used? Yeah. Symbologies. Symbologies, that's correct. Boy, these are going fast. <laughs> the first commercial use of a UPC symbol on a 10 pack of Wrigley's fruit, Juicy Fruit Gum took place at Marsh's Supermarket in what town? Yes. Troy, Ohio, that's correct. Very good. And finally, what is this symbol called and where was it invented? Japanese. Japanese, yes. This is invented in Japan, correct. All right. Now, you guys are going to have to keep, because I don't remember who all got them, so I'm not going to let you um, answer all the questions yourself. So, all right. Okay, this goes back to my barcode history. This is what I call my initial embarceration. So that's my boss, and that's me, if you can kind of figure that out. Brian, get in here. We have a problem. What do you know about barcodes? Not much, really. Why do you ask? Well, I want you to take a look at this. Two weeks. So what he asked me to take a look at, at was a letter that was sent to us from Caterpillar uh, requiring all of the Caterpillar uh, suppliers to provide barcode labels for their products because Caterpillar was modernizing their supply chain and uh, they wanted to know, or they wanted us to essentially put barcodes on our products. And that letter came with a little one page flyer advertisement from another local supplier of Caterpillar uh, who was offering their system that would take care of all this for us for a mere $9,000. And when I said two weeks, uh, my boss didn't believe me. But in two weeks, I can get our Laser Writer Plus to print these barcodes. And uh, he said something like, I'll hold you to that. But I was already out of the office by the time. <laughs> and this is what I built. Okay, This was the AIAG, the Automotive Industry Action Group's um, barcode specification for all incoming goods to an automotive manufacturer. And uh, if you've got a postscript speaking laser printer, this is super easy. Um, but one thing you have to get out of the mindset of is a lot of people look at a barcode and they see lines and rectangles. They see, uh, and they have to all be spaced just perfectly. And to a lot of people, that represents a very significant um, programming challenges because they got to figure out all kinds of X and Y coordinates and they've got to draw and then they got to fill areas and all that stuff. But uh, what I saw was pretty simple. This is a binary code, just like Morse code. And if you build it like a binary code and then just scale, well, the computer will do all the hard work for you. So that's what I did. That's what I built. And here I want to do a quick demonstration. We'll see if this works out. Okay. Um, web browser. Okay, and I want to do, um, okay. This is part of the problem we had. It's hyphen. Forgot my hyphen. Yes. Okay, now how do I get this up there? I guess I have to. All right, good. 
So, um, a brief intermission. Uh, for me, it was about a 20 year intermission, but uh, um, for us here, we're just gonna take a couple of seconds and commemorate my career at Caterpillar, which had, which had pretty much no barcodes in it. Um, when I got out of Caterpillar, I decided to go back to my roots and build a barcode uh, speaking uh, application, but PostScript was kind of uh, out of it, uh, not quite as much of an in thing as it was, and JavaScript was all the rave. So I wrote a JavaScript um, application that just takes, say, WordCamp, Peoria, and uh, let's make the height five and the width 25. And we'll do this in my favorite code 128. Okay, this is what I saw when I was thinking about how do I d develop a barcode app is I understood that barcodes look a lot like Morse code if you scale them wrong. And so if we replace these two, if we uh, say the height is 25 and the width is only five, things look a lot better, okay? And uh, what this app does is it takes these inputs in JavaScript and uh, it um, generates little f five dot space images right next to each other. So what you see here in this little uh, uh, blue selected area is just HTML image tags, which tells me uh, that this will work in any browser. Uh, it will work on mobile. It will work on tablets. It will work in Netscape Navigator 1.0, actually. Um, so if you... Uh, and, and that's kind of the way I like to build things, is, is so that they don't break just because you've adopted uh, some new version of something. Um, so this is a little utility that I wrote. It's on my GitHub, and uh, I can pass out that little. But this is just, this will allow you to do a quick barcode, but that was neither here nor there. All right, now what's next? All right. So how this works is you've got two basic stages. You need a symbology specific chunkinator is what I call it. And what that does is it takes your string like WordCamp Peoria and grinds it up and turns it into a set of ones and zeros just for the symbology. So if I wanted to do code 128, I'd need to run it through one symbology specific chunkinator. If I wanted to do code 39, I'd have to run it through a different one, a QR code, same thing. The ones and zeros are gonna be different based on what symbology you're using. But once you get the ones and zeros, then from there on, the code doesn't care what symbology it's, it's printing. It's gonna move those ones and zeros into a generic render engine, which is going to create based every five set of ones and zeros is gonna create an image tag that has base 64, you know, one dot a space, one dot white, one dot, or whatever it is. So these image tags, basically there's 32 of them, one for each five bit combination. Okay. <laughs> And now for the moment, we have all been dreading the, the code walkthroughs, okay? All right, so this is just the um, WordPress plugin boilerplate stuff that you have to put at the beginning of uh, any um, WordPress plugin. I've named this plugin Notionova underscore barcode, and that's for namespacing purposes. There's no one else in the world can, that can name their plugin Notionova underscore anything. Um, and so the, uh, that's filled out, we all get that. It's just a bunch of uh, boilerplate. All right, um, this is that 
generic, that symbolically generic junk, okay? See that image source, data, image, base64? Those are those image tags, okay? They represent five ones and zeros, basically, and you can scale them any way you want. But all this stuff is stuff that I spent probably two days on, drawing little tiny five, uh, 10, it was actually 10 by two pixel uh, graphics that represented all five or all 32 situations that you might run into. And then I took those, ran them through paint, ran them through GIMP, ran them back through paint, and then saved them into their tiniest possible um, representation. And all of that stuff is, the, is just a bunch of symbol specific malarkey. Let's move on, moving right along. Um, so this is the code that takes that, that uh, uh, symbol nonspecific malarkey and turns it into a, um, a result string. And that result string is what gets output to the browser. Okay, so this is that blue area that, I, that you saw earlier. This is the WordPress version of that. So this is what actually gets out to the browser um, for display. Um, now this is code specific. This only works for code 128. Okay, so this is a symbology specific. This is like that blue engine, right? So it knows that if you give it the ASCII char character code for a capital M, that it's supposed to find, say, this uh, uh, this line right here that says 1110010110 or one of these. So when you give it an M, it comes back with that. So it's the one that translates the text you enter into the ones and zeros, this big long string of ones and zeros. Um, and this is, the, this is it. This is all of the code you need to make a uh, uh, WordPress um, plugin. This is a short code plugin for Notion Ovis barcode and your attributes that you can pass it are the string, the height, and the width. And uh, that will give you your um, output. So let's try that. Uh -huh. Do I get uh, bravery points for working on my production website in, a, in the middle of a presentation? You know, normally, to a typical audience, you should consider this a compliment. Uh, normally, eh, I wouldn't do this, but because I know Mark Du Bois is in the room. Very good. All right, so let's uh, make a new post. Uh, add new. And we'll call this barcode demo. And we'll say, uh, welcome to WordCamp. Peoria 2018 and then we'll do a left bracket no shinovas underscore barcode and then we'll say um, 
space str equals quote welcome comma welcome exclamation point quote and I'll just go with the standard values for the height and width and we'll save this publish okay and if I preview I don't know I want to preview it, preview it I just want to sh oh I, I could have vote viewed post there it is and you see the brackets and the it's just exactly what we typed we see that because I forgot to activate the plugin <laughs> there it is Hello. Okay, now let's go back to my site and go back. There it is. All right, anybody got a um, phone they can bring notionovus.com up on and navigate to? I mean, I've got one. Huh? That's that's okay. Okay. Menu. Blog. There we go. Where you see that? Um, let's see, go to, um, go back here and go back to my post. takes guts. <laughs> All right. Anyway, thank you very much. Um, well, let's get back to the presentation. Not quite over with. All right. That more quick demonstrations? That was what I just did. Okay. The dreaded quiz, part two. How am I doing on time? Okay. AIAG is an acronym for what industry action group? Yes. Auto Excuse me? Auto Automotive, that's correct. All right. Brian's barcodes require how many processing steps? Yes. Two, that is absolutely correct. What primary symbology is currently supported with the Notion Ovis barcode short code? Yes. Correct. Code 128B. Thank you. Brian's barcodes were implemented in what scripting language before being converted to PHP for WordPress? Yes. JavaScript is correct. Yes. All right, now somebody's been raising their hand every time. And I want to make sure I give it just to them <laughs> on this last one. Oh, dang it. That's what I forgot. I forgot the math. Yes. What's that? Modulus. What does the percent mathematical operator do in JavaScript and PHP? That's correct. So we have a developer in the room. Excellent. Uh, I was going to point that out when I was going through that boarding 
that boring uh, code walkthrough, but I could see that most of the eyes in the room were closed. <laughs> so that's why I didn't. And that's my life behind barcodes. Yes. I am ready for questions. Yes, this is my final screen. I'm noticing on your barcode, it, it's, each cell is kind of put into. Yeah, that's a styling issue. I don't know what it is yet, but I'm gonna. There's a part in the in the uh, CSS I think that's doing that's rounding edges um, it, according to my theme or something like that. And because it doesn't affect the actual scannability of the barcode, I'm letting it go for now. Uh, but I'm going to be on that pretty soon next week. Any other questions? Pretty much what you're expecting. <laughs> yeah? Why would you want to your barcodes on your website PLS? Good question. Absolutely a good question. Well, sometimes you go to like uh, event websites and they'll have barcodes printed on the badge and that makes it easier for uh, the people at the at the uh, receiving side, you know, to scan your um, to scan your barcode and then know who you are, as opposed to uh, you know when you're going from booth to booth or something like that, uh, as opposed to uh, you know getting your business card, etc. So there's there's some speed of of uh, recognition that you can get from barcodes. Um, sometimes people just want and this bark this little short code thing is just to be able to slap a barcode but sometimes people want to print out sheets of barcodes so that they can peel them off of label stock and stick them on shelves and stuff like that and that's uh, kind of the next step in the evolution of this uh, WordPress plugin okay Somebody, some people put it on their uh, business cards for social handles and everything mm -hmm. so and uh, I've had clients where they wanted the barcode, the same one that they actually had to do business cards for, that they actually put on the website, which had all of the things that you needed to know about that same old person because it went to a specific site. So you could just, once it, you popped it, had it in your browser after you've gone through the QR code, scanned it, and then all of a sudden you just bookmark all about them. And, and it saved you from having to type it up and everything. Right. So those 2D barcodes, like QR code, uh, actually have enough space in them. If you, if you uh, go big enough, uh, rectangularly, um, they have enough space in them to hold uh, your, your entire contact, your CRD file or whatever um, that uh, people use to actually exchange contact information. So um, you can embed quite a bit of information in those rectangular barcodes. In the shorter ones, they're, they're better for unique identifiers when you're passing out identities like, you know, badges and things like that, so. Yes, Chris. So, like, like, if I were to print those out onto a ticket or something, and then somebody could present that, and I could scan them, and I would know who they were, they could walk around there. Right. So if, Right, so if you print out like a schedule or, or something like that, uh, or a ticket to an event, then um, not only can I scan the ticket to see if it's valid, but I actually know who you are because I can put your IP address and a unique identifier for your session and things like that into that barcode. So I know more about you uh, that might not even be printed in, on the page, yeah. Yeah, you need one of these things. They're about 200 bucks. Okay. But is there a way online to use them? Sure. You can also use a cell phone. A lot of cell phone, uh, there are a lot of cell phone apps that allow you to scan barcodes from uh, using your cell phone as a scanner as well. Yeah. I, 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 I use that thing. That was the one I was saying about uh, when you're scanning it. Mm -hmm. If you're having a case on the back that say you're reviewing for QR codes or something else, because uh, we, we found this out when we were doing that for Yoast and everything because we were playing around and everything. So we found that every time we had somebody like the mine, we were scanning it and using the app and everything, it wasn't scanning but when you took it off it actually worked. So you actually you're like, hey, I want to do this. And you're like wondering why it won't scan. If you have a case on, take it off. My phone would be the QR code with the camera. You still have the camera. Do 
you have ambitions to create an app like that to create the QR codes? Um, yes, I can use, uh, the problem is that this is all done with divs and images and those uh, um, embedded uh, images. And so even on like a web page or on a mobile app, there's a possibility you can enter too much data in and once that wraps, you're done, okay? Because it's, the barcode will no longer scan if it wraps. Um, so. And Q QR codes are even more finicky because you have to stack the divs right up on top of one another. And if any one of them does any kind of shifting, then it won't scan. So there's, uh, there's a little more difficulty in building QR codes and PDF 417s. But eventually what I'd like to do is build a complete barcode utility library sort of a thing. Yep, yep. Um, the thing I want to get away from is uh, server-side uh, calculations and stuff like that. I think um, best to put a very small amount of uh, code in the browser or um, at least on the server side and just spit the uh, spit those little image um, things back and forth. So. Okay. Well, thank you very much, everybody, for your attention. <laughs>